More than ever, a need has arisen to teach our children good health habits. An essential step can come through gardening. We'll have more on that and on-the-spot answers to all your Northland garden questions straight ahead on this edition of Great Gardening. Once the plant is infected, there really isn't anything you can do about it. The, the root flare is right along here, so we want to make sure that's below ground level. Watermelons, musk melons. This is a yellow or gray cone flower. This one's called uh, Picasso in pink. Hello and welcome to Great Gardening. I'm Pamela Fish. This week we focus on schoolyard gardens and efforts to get kids involved in gardening. Our perennial experts have been excellent role models for years and we welcome back Tom Casper, the president of the Duluth Garden Flower Society, and Bob Olin, horticulturist and state and county educator. And Tom, you especially have worked with kids uh, putting together gardens and just getting excited about gardening. Yeah, well, and Bob has a course too. I mm -hmm. don't want to take away that. Um, but yeah, it's been a lot of fun teaching kids about gardening and really sharing in their joy of learning about gardening and seeing just their expressions when they have success in the garden. Mm -hmm. So, And kids of all ages, Bob, really well, can right. learn a lot. <laughs> Anybody can learn. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you, we see it both sides. We see the youngest and then we see a lot of retirees right mm -hmm. now that have never had the time. That's right. So that's a great combination with people a little older and younger and everybody in the process of learning, so it's, it's a lot of fun. All right. Well, a lot to talk about on that front, but we want to introduce our phone volunteers from the Carleton County Master Gardeners. A big thank you to them for coming in to answer the questions and concerns that are building as the garden season heats up. So call or send an email. The numbers are 218-788-2844 if you're calling locally. Toll free, you can call 1-877-307-8762 or you can email your question during our program to askgardening at wdse.org. And as mentioned, things are heating up in the garden. You guys have been really busy. Yeah, been a busy time and we've had, we had some heat today for the mm -hmm. first time, except those right near the lake. I know we got a lot of viewers that right. are probably wondering what we're talking about where they sat in the cloud bank, but over the hill it was really very warm today. It yeah. was. And, and yesterday as well, seven, mm -hmm. almost 80 degrees um, up over the hill. Still, up, unfortunately, in the upper 40s and low 50s by the lake. <laughs> by the lake, but, but it'll, it'll catch up and it's yeah. just so gratifying to see things starting to shoot up exactly. out there. Exactly. And we've right. had, you know, we've had enough moisture, we've got it in the soil, so this is kind of catch-up time, so we're really making up for lost time in a very cool spring, but we're, right. we're coming along very well now. Okay, we already have some questions, too, even uh, before we start, <laughs> but we're going to talk right now about schools across Duluth, where kids of all ages are learning to grow their own food. It's a skill that contributes to so many areas of education and could ultimately lead to much healthier communities. I work for the Duluth Community Garden Program and I am the Healthy School Food Coordinator. When we offered a school garden training last fall, I opened it up to um, teachers in the Duluth Public Schools. And what I found there was a huge momentum um, related to wanting school gardens for our students. Um, K through 12, they will be breaking ground, um, but on throughout the summer. So the, the growing, their first growing season will likely be um, next growing season, they'll have a full, beautiful garden. We're taking the uh, plant science and to horticulture class with Miss Vidal, and it's kind of about learning, you know, the different pHs and soils, the growing temperatures and germination mixes you can use to grow plants. So usually when starting out with plants, you use a smaller, closer together particle mix, and then when they go on to transplant, you use a deeper soil. And some of the things you've picked up in this class, Ron? Um, what type of temperatures temperature zones to grow in and uh, what soils are best for it, like better drainage or uh, which one holds most water for soil. So in class time we had, uh, Ms. Modell handed out papers of uh, the perimeter of what it was going to be. So we had to make our own plans and then they took bits from each one of the students and added in and then we came out with like their final draft. And as a class, we went down with shovels and soil samplers, and we took soil samples from all over. So we might need to bring in topsoil and build raised beds. 
Yeah, that's the main hope. Like they're trying to get it for uh, mainly the school for uh, kids to eat healthier, but also for if communities around here would like to have some fresh fruit we could provide for them. My name is Jenny Madowell and I teach, um, I'm an agriculture science teacher and I teach plant science, greenhouse class and forestry, fish and wildlife. Here at East High School when we moved over, um, there was a group of us teachers that wanted to be involved in creating a schoolyard habitat. Part of that mission is to promote healthy eating. And so even at the high school level, um, thought they, these students haven't had the opportunity to maybe have a garden at the elementary school. And so here they could experience it. Um, they're really excited about the possibility of getting some good food in the lunch program and um, being able to use it as an outdoor classroom. We have a number of programs here um, at East that are involved. We have a restaurant called Food for Thought, and they've put together a wish list of herbs for our students to grow. And um, also we have the health, um, health teacher is involved in the program, and um, biology department. Um, I'm thinking of foreign language was also, has also been involved. They're excited about getting their students involved, especially Spanish, in um, make, growing some crops that they could have a salsa garden. The main rationale for this project is um, food literacy, to increase food literacy. And, and some folks say, what does that mean, food literacy? And it's really just about that getting back to um, how our food is grown, um, what it tastes like when it's fresh from the ground. There's a lot of research that supports this as a as a, um, a tangible way to increase fruit and vegetable consumption is that when kids grow their own food, their own vegetables and fruits, they're more likely to eat them um, and more likely to enjoy eating them. <laughs> Boy, we've sure experienced that in our family, and I'm sure you've seen it with people that you've worked with as well, you guys. Yeah, Absolutely. what a what a great segment. Of course, mm -hmm. I'm very biased about great things that are happening in the gardening world, and especially with kids, but mm -hmm. what a great segment. And it's not just East High School, or high schools in particular. Uh, there are two elementary schools, two middle schools in Duluth, where they are um, putting gardens in and learning how to make them grow. And we have uh, some more pictures of those where Duluth school kids have been involved in, in sharing and showing their harvest from their home gardens. Um, here's a look at what they were doing at Lowell. Yeah, we, uh, the kids and I uh, designed a garden that went in last year at Lowell School and also one at Stowe last year as well. But you can see the kids all in the pile of soil and, and working on the garden, really a lot of fun and, and really engaging for those kids. Um, so it was a lot of fun and, and meeting with the kids and talking mm -hmm. about design ideas and it was really uh, very cool. They're so excited to be yeah. working, working <laughs> yeah. outdoors, to be working in the dirt and, and you know, hopefully to be seeing things grow soon right. and then be able to eat it. Yeah, exactly, lots yeah. of fun. All right, that's wonderful. Well. I think we're going to go to some questions because they're already coming in here. We do have a couple held over from last week. Maybe we'll start with that. Paula from Gilbert wants to know, can you recommend any vines or climbing plants for a shade area? Um, I could start with one. Uh, Dutchman's Pipe, which mm -hmm. is in the same family as the Bleeding Heart, uh, is really does very well in a shady location. Gets a, a very small white flower, very slow growing, so she's going to have to be patient with it, but that would work very well. Um, um, the other one that would work well is bittersweet. So. Okay, all right. Matt from Duluth has a cherry tree and he says it's hardy for Duluth, planted it three years ago. Um, but he thinks it's planted in too deep a hole because it collects water in the hole. Any way to uproot that or, and get something underneath it or what, <laughs> what can he do at this point? Well, at least he recognized the fact that it probably went in too deep and that's probably one of the, uh, the common flaws that a lot of people make when they're planting. He does want to lift it. He wants to lift it uh, right now. It would be better if they hadn't leafed out. But at this point, I would still take it out. I would not. Uh, I might incorporate uh, some organic material into a broader area. I would just mm -hmm. not put something underneath it. I'd sure. try to raise the whole plant level, look for that first major lateral root, and then drop that just below the surface. But it's, uh, he's absolutely right. You get them in too deep, they'll rot off right at the uh, stem line. 
So okay. the root flare right below the surface of the yeah, soil. Yeah, the main lateral main lateral root. Some people call it root flare. Root flare sometimes refers to uh, the stem where it enlarges as well. But you want to look for that first major, not the small little root fibrils. First major root that goes right below the soil line. And, you, you know, spend a little time positioning it because that tree will be there a long time. It's a great thing, though, that he's recognized that. You can always, sure. early in a tree's life, correct for those kinds of errors. But when it's 20 years old, it's going to be hard to do. Much harder. Another tree question, do I fertilize my apple trees in the spring? Absolutely. be the only time uh, you want to use just a common lawn fertilizer without okay. the herbicide. Spread it out beyond the drip line. Uh, we've got some more intermittent showers coming. And just before the next rain be a great time to do that. All right. Um, this one is from, I don't know who, but it, it's about a three-year-old clematis that they want to use Epsom salts on to fertilize. Do you sprinkle those on the ground or dilute them in water? And what do you guys think well, about the use of that? It used to be used a lot and mm -hmm. kind of a, an old gardening sort of thing, really about creating bud break or additional blooms. Uh, lots of folks that are heavily involved in growing roses do that as well. Probably not that necessary if they go out and just buy a good fertilizer that's maybe a little higher in uh, potassium and phosphorus, uh, we'll do the same thing for them without the potential of uh, over uh, the use, overuse over of that. Over fertilizing it, yeah. you know, okay. And you're picking up nutrients in the Epsom salt that we aren't typically deficient in, calcium and sulfur, and we, we typically don't have deficiencies there. Mm -hmm. So I think it's more important that you concentrate on nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And if you want to put a little Epsom salt in and you feel a little better, it's not going to hurt anything. And okay. also an opportunity to soak your feet prior to <laughs> That's the better use That's for Epsom right. salt. You can, you can use, use them for that as well. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. Dan in Duluth wants, or Don, I'm not sure, wants to know when's the best time to spray an apple tree. Boy, there's a question because it depends on what you're going to spray for. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you want to be sure you ha you have an issue. If if he's trying to control some of the very common insects, uh, he's going to wait a little bit longer. Uh, I would say this: the time that you do not want to spray is when they're in bloom. Okay. We want to be very conscious and very careful. We don't want to, in any way, damage the pollinators, which are extremely important to us. So there are other ways to control insects rather than spraying. But uh, sometimes it may be necessary if you've got a fungal problem. It's been repeated. We've seen situations with scab where we get it year after year can actually sure. damage the tree. Then you want to go right about now with bud break with a with a labeled fungicide. Okay. Susan from Carlton wants to know if she can divide Dianthus, uh, her perennial, and how does she do it? Chop it in half? <laughs> Well, <laughs> Why are you laughing? You have, you have learned so much on this program. <laughs> yes, <laughs> just there, right? chop it in <laughs> half and call it a day. No, no, uh, that was her question. How um, do I do it? Well, chop and actually, it in half? If, if it's a good clump, she can. And okay. dianthus are it's a pretty delicate root system, mm -hmm. so she wants to go in and sort of gently, rather than chopping it in half, go in and gently sort of Separating break them half. apart. Yeah. Okay, okay. But I like chop it in <laughs> half. Like, mm -hmm. Take the axe out. That's what mm -hmm. I probably do. Okay. Um, let's see, Lisa from Duluth wants to know, can, can, I can't read that, I'm sorry, Lisa, we're going we're to get back to that in a minute, but here's an interesting one. What flowers would attract hummingbirds or butterflies? Oh, good, Tom. <sighs> well, my favorite plant, and we've talked about it, mm -hmm. our 11th season, uh, talking about it, bee balm is absolutely the singular best plant for attracting butterflies okay. and hummingbirds and bees. Bob had mentioned uh, bringing pollinators in for our apple trees and other sorts of fruits and things like that. So a plant like bee balm also helps, blooms later than when those are in bloom, but it helps create sort of that environment. So Okay. And good winter hardy, and you want to look yeah. for maybe some of the newer varieties that have got some of the fungal the resistance. Mildew the resistance, mildew resistance. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You know, Dan had a follow-up question on the apple trees, and it was, can seeds in apples be planted? Seeds from the apples? They absolutely can. They need to go through a cold shock. So you take them out, put them in the fridge in some damp sand for about 60 days, then they can be potted up and planted. But don't count on getting the same kind of apple because they won't come true to type, uh, assuming, again, that you had a hybrid tree to begin with. And oh. we're sort of going through a cold shock right now, don't we? Uh, well, we are. It's almost as <laughs> happened that way, naturally, yes. Unfortunately, we are. Okay, time for one more, I think. Uh, let's see, what variety of Roma tomato would be meaty and high yield? Oh, boy, they're all good. I guess the, um, the Amish paste is one that's been around for a long li okay. time. It's an heirloom right, that does real well. Okay. <laughs> and there are a couple of other Italian varieties uh, that are, are 
pretty acceptable as well. But and, and like pretty much in general, all the Romas are very meaty. They're really the tomato of sure. choice for folks that want to do canning and, and, and cooking, preserving. Yeah. And they're great on sandwiches too. Spaghetti I love sauce, the Roma tomato. Yeah. Okay, we'll take more questions coming up later. But first we want to talk about how uh, early last fall we visited a gardener in Carleton County who saw a bumper crop of vegetables surrounded by beautiful blooms in the heat of that season. Here's tonight's tour. Hi, my name is Roberta Liu and this is our garden. We live out in um, Reverter Township outside of Cloquet. I like flowers a little bit better than vegetables, but they're nice too to have. I think if you have just all of one thing, then it gets a little boring. Once it's planted, if you kind of start out with the right kind of, of good dirt, uh, the ground or from the ground up, don't just throw it in. Like a lot of people will just try to take the sod away and then it doesn't always work. That's why I've got a lot of raised beds. Over there is the, the bottom of the coal burning stove from my mom, where I grew up on my farm in Noka County. And, uh, some of that stuff has sentimental value, it's kind of fun. It doesn't look like a lot, but most of these are perennials. And so almost all the plants I've gotten either from friends or family or people that we know. And I just like the mix of flowers with the vegetables. And I get tired of square rows, so that's why I put down, I find those metal rings from, I think they're old wheel spokes and stuff, or wheel from wagons. And so I put those down, but then it kind of keeps, you can keep track of where the things are planted. But this is a forget-me-not that was from my mom's place. And this was a yellow Swedish pea from my sister Ruth. And my son Joe gave me that little pink rose bush. This heat, some certain plants, of course, the squash, the cucumbers, love it, and tomatoes, and the gourds. The, they just are going crazy with the heat. But the lettuce is a little bit wilty. We didn't have a tree to put the hammock up on, so Walt built the structure in order to ha put the hammock in there. And then the robins always build nests up above. These were decorative and they grew so good and that my son John and Walt put up the hops frame out there. And they've made, they've had friends that have made beer. They're usually beautiful and they'll be all the way up the top. I think it was that early, early spring that messed them up. Anything that you pull up, the weeds, the carrot tops, Tomatoes, the goats will, the, people think they'll eat anything. They're picky eaters actually, but they love anything organic. I don't know what I'd do if I lived in town and had to try to compost. Work with what you've got instead of struggling to try to make it work some other way. Otherwise you're gonna, if you start too big too, it's gonna, you're gonna be disappointed. I don't like to follow a lot of the rules um, with gardening. I, I think then it gets a little bit, kind of too much like school. Roberta just had a knack for things out there yeah, and she beautiful. had a, a great mix of flowers and vegetables and I love what she said, said in the end, I don't really like to follow the rules, it feels like going to school. <laughs> well, Make your own rules, we're talking you today about kids in school who are doing gardening yeah. and um, you know whether or not they were following the rules they really came back with some beautiful right. Yes. Beautiful examples of what they grew at home, and they brought them in to share. Yeah, here's uh, one of the uh, the harvest festivals that we held at one of our schools, or one of the schools I'm involved with. This is North Shore Elementary, and a, and we had almost 60 percent of the kids that go to that school that brought things in for the harvest festival, which was a lot of fun. And then we also have a picture from uh, the harvest festival at Congdon, and we had almost 60 percent there as well, kids who uh, who really are excited about gardening and excited about showing the things that they've grown. So lots of fun in the garden and kids are excited about it. Yeah, yeah, we love that they're learning all about that. Okay, well, Lisa from Duluth, we figured this one out, says, can I leave old leaves on the garden and plants will grow through them or do I do have to rake those off? Well, if you're gonna be direct seeding anything, mm -hmm. so you gotta to prepare a seed bed, so you wanna take them off. As a light mulch, I think they can work real fine. Uh, what we found does not work is direct incorporation. In other words, if you had a layer of three or four inches of leaves and you till those down, even with a little additional nitrogen, you get some intermediates in there that can cause problems. So I would be taking them off, composting them first, and okay. then the completed mature compost. That's what we can put back in the garden. Okay. We have a couple questions via email. Could you please tell us again what raspberry plants are best to grow along the lakeshore? And that's from Sharon. <laughs> along the lakeshore. Well, 
Along the lakeshore, we do have some fall bearing varieties actually that have done very nicely for the last several years. There would be Autumn Bliss and Autumn Britain, Caroline Summit, those would be four varieties for the fall bearers. And then I think for the conventional June bearers or July bearers in our case, uh, I think that uh, you <laughs> this can't. This year for sure. This yeah. year for sure, maybe August bears this year, I'm not yeah. sure. But uh, stick with the tried and true, and that would be Boyne, a good Canadian Boyne. variety. Okay. Uh, Killarney would be another good variety mm -hmm. that, uh, that you can't really go wrong with. Nova is another beautiful dessert berry. So all of those we mentioned uh, will do very well for along the lake shore. All right. Another question via email from Barb. I have a hydrangea that grows well, forms large clusters of buds, but the buds never open. What can I do? Uh, it could be a couple of things. You know, mm -hmm. I, think, I think hydrangeas were oversold as far as how much shade that okay. they like. I think they actually really want, especially in our northern climates, a little more sun than folks are giving them. So she may want to look at moving it to a sunnier spot and also look at the soil fertility, maybe upping her fertilizer, but cutting back a little bit on that nitrogen to help with the flower formation. So okay. uh, this is really about quality growth. We want to push that growth along so it pushes the buds. So yep. fertility, water, a little more sun, those types of things. All right. John from Virginia recently planted a honeyberry. We talked about those last year. What should he do to make it grow well? What kind of soil and any, uh, any other kind of help on care okay. for the honeyberry? Honeyberry is kind of interesting because mm -hmm. it's actually a honeysuckle, anisera, and it's different than the blueberry. Um, the nice thing is it will grow in any number of soils, a wide range of pH. Uh, it's a woody, so I would just say good drainage, full sun, and at least two for pollination, and then a little fertility this time of year, a little bit of either organic or synthetic fertilizer around the plants, and that's all it takes. Okay. Spread them out, they'll, they'll spread about four feet or so, so uh, make sure you've got them adequately spaced. All right, Luann from Duluth wants to know about shoots on, that are coming up on the bottom of a nine bark, and uh, can, I, can I use those shoots, take them out, move them somewhere? It's a tree, so can I move the tree? I don't. I can't read the rest of that, but probably not. She, okay. she should clean them up because they're okay. really uh, detracting both from the appearance and also from the health. Uh, they are coming off of the root, so rather than a, probably rather than an individual plant, she probably wants to just clean those up and and make it look better. So she could, if she wanted to, um, try to. Um, root them individually, but there's really not. Uh, Would you have to put them in water first to do that? Well, or just not water, but probably again, maybe a cold treatment, but mm -hmm. also in a sand type of okay. base and hope that they root. So. All right. Terry says, I have some well established asparagus. Um, shoots are not coming up. This is in Duluth. He did fertilize, or he or she did fertilize this spring with compost. Where are the shoots of the asparagus? I want to know that too because my <laughs> asparagus didn't come up this year. And it's been up for several years in a row. If, if it's well established, I would go back to being patient. We're seeing things <laughs> develop so very, very slowly. Oh, Bob, we hate that answer. <laughs> <laughs> you, you hate a spring crop coming in midsummer. Right? Yeah. Uh, that, that would be my first assumption. Um, there's always a possibility with the December we had of some winter injury that may have occurred, but I think they're just very, very slow this year. Okay. And, and certainly hearing from a lot of folks that had some unusual losses of plant material that had been well established mm -hmm. because of that November and December we had. So. Okay, more questions. Unfortunately, no more time for them, but we'll try and hang on to them for next time. We do want to um, thank all our viewers who send in pictures for us to share. We love when they do that. There haven't been so many from this season with the growing slow to start, but we still have some charming shots, charming shots, excuse me, to share. And here's this week's Grow and Show. A three-year-old transplant from a friend, this yellow lady slipper plant started slow, but Judy Geis of Hermantown says after getting acclimated in her yard, it's grown from a wish to seven blooms. Richard Lindsay shares this photo he captured of a hummingbird moth seen feeding last summer in northwest Wisconsin. And from Carlene Blair in International Falls, a bevy of vintage kitchen and household items displayed with inspired effect. From succulents in an ice cube tray, or in the toaster, to funnels that serve as flower pots, Carlene loves to repurpose old items for use in the garden. If you have a clever garden display or prized plant or flower you'd like to share, please send your pictures to greatgardening at wdse.org or mail to 632 Niagara Court, Duluth and show what you grow. 
So keep those pictures coming in. Want to tell those you about a couple? Those were charming, by the way. They were charming, <laughs> weren't they? I think that should be a new word for us. Yeah. Um, we want to share a couple of things going on. The Master Gardeners of Carleton County are having a bus trip to the Minnesota Landscape Arboretum, and uh, we'll put more about that on our website. El Trusa Club is having what they call a garden affair, and uh, it's this Saturday. There are lots of nice plants for sale, and that's a really good cause. And then Beaner Central, which is a coffee shop in West Duluth, is having a plant swap and that's on Saturday morning through the noon hour that's something where you just bring one in and, and you get one back and uh, wow, some the nice. first thing that's their first annual but it sounds like a good thing to try also another plant sale coming up on June 20th that's the Lake Superior Master Gardener Association of Douglas County and uh, you can find out more about these events on our calendar on our website at wdse.org and go to the programs page go to great gardening for links and more information that's just an example of the, how great this program is. is the opportunity for folks to hear about things like that that they may not oh, hear yeah. about yeah i think that is that is some uh, a, a nice a nice opportunity for us to share those things yeah. All right. Well, we want to thank um, all of our phone volunteers from Carleton County Master Gardeners, our perennial experts, of course, Bob Olin, Tom Casper. You guys, as always, have great information for us. And um, I have to say happy birthday to a great gardener in my life, my father-in-law, George Carlson. Nice. He's a great gardener at 87. I think nice. it's 87, Wonderful. George. But yeah, he's... he's Obviously, been eating his vegetables. Yes, he, yes, I think he obviously has. Oh, Bob. All right. Um, also, thank you to everyone who called in and all who emailed. And of course, we'll be back with a lot more great gardening next week. We have two weeks to go this season. But for now, from all of us here, thanks for watching and enjoy the garden.